risk management a helicopter view first uh, points of discussion we would discuss what is the concept of risk and then we would compare risk management versus or to risk taking and we will see if there is a small difference between these two concepts so risk arises from uncertainty regarding entity's future losses as well as future gains risk is not necessarily related to the size of potential loss it would help if you write down these uh, sentences i'll ask you which ones to be written see these theory topics when you read them they look too easy okay in fact you would end up reading them too fast but when you will see the questions constructed on every small sentence there could be a question and it could be really difficult so these are the sentences that we have to specifically remember first one write down risk is not necessarily related to the size of potential loss okay, so today we would see a question which actually says that uh, if the loss is going to be really large does that mean the project is risky the answer is no because we know that loss in advance so it is not we cannot say that if the amount of loss is higher the risk is higher what is important concern here <clears throat> important concern here is the variability that means the uncertain part regarding that loss should we go ahead risk management includes a sequence of activities aimed to reduce or potential to incur expected losses entity can consciously determine how much risk it is willing to take next point of discussion risk management process and the problems and challenges in the risk management process so there are five steps first is identify the risk so maybe let's think from the perspective of what's happening in the greece now see this is all uh, to some extent uh, keynesian economics as he says keynes said that uh, you should pay people to dig holes and then you should also pay them to cover those holes right that means you if the economy is not growing then you uh, start putting in as much money in the hands of people as possible which will stimulate the economy so maybe uh, when economies like greece they were giving such high amount of pension to their uh, people and they, their expenditure was so high compared to the revenue maybe at that stage they could have identified a risk that some day the size of debt will increase substantially higher to the size of a gdp and maybe there would be a possibility that we would not generate sufficient cash flows to make payment on the debt right? so that's the first step in the process india is not stopped we've uh, shifted to a different pension system is right so uh, indian most of the government before i think 2007 or 8 we were on uh, defined uh, benefit plans and post that we shifted to defined contribution plans right? so we identified maybe risk uh, early second quantify and estimate the risk exposure so then you decide fine this is a risk what is the maximum risk exposure that i'm going to have right so different metrics of evaluating this risk but you would say i will not let the debt to gdp ratio increase beyond xyz percentage so in india we had this act a few years ago fiscal responsibility and uh, budget management act frmba and the idea was to ensure that our fiscal deficits are not increasing too high because higher fiscal deficit efficiently or uh, effectively will lead to higher debt ratios or if you decide that you don't want any exposure to that risk then how do we transfer that okay so identify then quantify step number 3 this is important collective effects of the risk exposures okay so you cannot look at risk in isolation for example one risk is your level of uh, debt your level of debt to gdp is increasing second risk is that inflationary pressures are high and so then what is the collective impact of all those risk variables on the organization if you've decided to take the exposure or a cost benefit analysis on risk transfer method right so risk transfer would be 
let's say simplest mechanism is hedging you can buy a derivative instrument and pass on that risk uh, with pension system one of the big risk is mortality that what if we assume that employee or our people will die at the age of 65 and what if he doesn't because if he doesn't then every year we have to pay extra amount which is a loss right so government would want these people to <laughs> but one of the ways in which that risk can be transferred there is a product in the market of course not so popular is it's called death derivative okay so you can purchase this product and the payoff of the product is a function of how long people live so if they live longer then you get payments on this product that means the issuer makes losses so this could be one of the ways of transferring those risk then develop a risk mitigation strategy and finally assess performance and amend risk mitigation strategy as required now seem like very easy points i came across a question on one of the previous uh, frm question booklets where they said which of the following is the last step in the risk management process and there was this option given and this option given and there were a couple of other options given so you need to be very very careful while reading theory and try to spend as much time as possible so that you remember how it was presented in the text so in practice five step process might not be followed in the same fashion what is the what are the two key problems with the process number one identifying the current risk right so maybe they never uh, thought that they would end up in a scenario where eurozone would not be willing to bail them out so this this could be a potential one of the risk that was not identified and second finding an efficient method transferring the risk risk management from a economic perspective so this is interesting think of it this way let's let's think of any of the risk that that comes to your mind tell me any risk let us say uh, the same risk that we were talking about mortality risk so now the risk is that your employees typically in a us pension uh, mechanism your employees will outlive the original expectation now you decided to transfer the risk okay so let's say your a manufacturing company or let's say you are some manufacturing company you go to a monoline insurer or let's say you go to jp morgan and you ask them to sell you a debt derivative okay now when you purchase the debt derivative for this organization now there isn't any mortality risk do you agree because that is being covered by that financial product in return you would pay them some premium but think from a overall economy perspective is that mortality risk still existent for the entire economy yes so for individual player that risk can still be removed but for the entire economy that risk cannot be removed have you an agreement here yes we are just transferring it to other party and what you do not want is that you want that risk to be well diversified you do not want few players in the economy having exposed to too large amount of risk what happens with what happened with lehman brothers or guinea may guinea mac those <coughs> asset securitization companies or agencies of gov us government where they had exposed themselves to too much of risk so this is that point i also saw a theory question on this risk management may not be effective on an overall economic basis because it only involves risk transferring by one party and risk assumption by another party risk must be sufficiently dispersed among willing and able participants in the economy that means risk should be with those people who are willing and also able to handle that risk another challenge with risk management process is that it failed to consistently assist in preventing market disruptions and financial accounting frauds so of course they are uh, i think the classic case in this segment is enron right but there are multiple cases and we in fact have a topic on this as well but then it says this is one of the big risk because you would identify risk based on what data is presented to you what if the data itself is flawed then your risk identification process will itself be flawed 
risk management can also be thought of as a zero sum game because some winning parties will gain at the expense of some losing parties any questions on this okay tools and procedures used to measure and manage risk so we'll look at quantitative qualitative and enterprise risk management three concepts here quantitative first one is var now there are separate topics uh, that would be going through in var but just to give you a quick introduction let's say we have a var which says uh, a daily 5% var is 1 million dollar or let's say 5 million dollar how should we interpret this number there is a 95% chance 95% chance that on any given day your total losses will not exceed 5 million dollars so this is an historical war where what we are assuming is that the data or risk is behaving in a normal distribution fashion and then we are just looking at the left tail of the normal distribution and taking out the value of the last 5% now i think okay we have one more example one day war 90% confidence level of 1 million means there is 10% chance that there would be a loss greater than 1 million loss greater than 1 million but how much greater that is not defined in var that's one of the biggest limitation isn't it and again it's a historical var with an assumption of normal distribution hmm yes different level of confidence will have different values of var var can be potentially dangerous when attempting to measure risk in non normal circumstances an extreme left tail event something that happened in 2008 we call these as left tail events that your data which might appeared as if it was behaving in a normal distribution suddenly had a really large amount of left skew leptocurtic kind of behavior that means it had a large amount of losses in illiquid positions and over a long period of time are we fine with this next term is economic capital it refers to illiquid means you are not being able to convert them to cash easily so assumption again with var is that if required you would be able to sell them quickly but what if it's not then your losses will increase even beyond that economic capital refers to holding sufficient liquid reserves to cover a potential loss okay what does it mean <clears throat> i read this somewhere on facebook that uh, apple balance sheet has uh, total current assets roughly of 250 billion dollars i don't know if that's true but if that's true that's a lot of cash now let us say that uh, maybe apple is not a good example let us say jpmc has a cash balance i don't know how much do they have but let's say 150 billion dollars now a 1% var at 95% level for jpmc is 120 billion dollars what it means is on a given day there is a it is very unlikely that jpmc will go bankrupt because their 1% war or i say one day war their one day war at 95% level is less than the amount of economic capital that they have are we fine here the next thing is scenario analysis this is similar to stress testing right so i think about a uh, couple of months back there were series of stress testing happening on european banks right? and the idea is scenario analysis stress testing you assume that something uh, some extreme event has happened in the market and worst case scenario then what will happen to the bank's balance sheet what if suddenly 20 30% people default then how the balance sheet would look okay so we have it here stress testing is a form of scenario analysis that examines financial outcome based on given stress on the entity next one is arm the word which you would want to remember with arm 
is integration where instead of looking at risk risk from isolation you look at that risk in a more integrated fashion for example let us say that uh, you have given loan and the collateral collateral is real estate okay now what kind of risk are we looking at here the first type of risk is the default risk do you agree that possibility that person who's taken loan would default one more risk here is of bankruptcy risk bankruptcy risk is that the person defaulted and the assets which are available with him value of those assets becomes lesser than the amount of loan given now see what happened in 2008 there were defaults and because of that default suddenly the supply of real estate in the market increased and because the supply increased the prices decreased that means at the same time they had default risk and bankruptcy risk these type of scenario or this type of risk is called as correlation risk where one risk is integrated with other risk so what arm says is that do not look at risk from isolation perspective look at risk in a integrated fashion so that you can manage it better are we fine with this so integrative approach okay in arm framework so again we have a topic on this and i think this will will have to be very careful while uh, dealing with questions because uh, in arm framework they have defined duties of different people but just a quick introduction to it board of directors would agree on specific risk exposure limit the next concept is expected versus unexpected loss expected loss we can compute in advance unexpected loss would consider how much an entity could lose outside of the normal course of business unexpected loss is more difficult to predict compute and provide for in advance which is quite intuitive correlation risk unfavorable events will happen together we did an example correlation risk will drive up the potential losses to unexpected levels relationship between risk and reward this is fairly intuitive what one should also consider is variability this part you can write down so you can say make a small flow chart out of this variability of reward that part which is measurable we can think of this part as risk but that portion which is non measurable we can think of this portion as uncertainty that part which is measurable we can think of that as risk but the unmeasurable part we can think of this as uncertainty again just a theory point on technical definition should we go ahead okay now some entities will have weak risk management system which allows for potential returns to be overstated because they are not adjusted for risk you know for example let us say that uh, you have made a potential sales which is into a foreign currency and to hedge that risk of foreign currency you purchase a forward contract the very fact that you purchased a forward contract now what you are exposed to is or future contract you are exposed to mark to market risk correct so the moment risk increases then your potential returns should be calculated in the context of risk are you following this 
value of any asset is present value of future cash flow the moment discount rate increases value of asset decreases so if you do not capture the risk that means your discount rates are not adjusted for risk then automatically your returns will appear to be overstated correlation risk is ignored which will again overstate the risk sorry which will understate the risk classes of risk so first is market risk which has got four sub parts interest rate equity price foreign exchange and commodity price what would be interest rate risk if interest rate increases then valuation of your assets will decrease but if you've taken a loan it's a floating rate loan the interest rate risk would be increase in the interest rates equity price risk is simply decrease in the value of asset foreign exchange is if you have a asset and the currency depreciates if you have a liability and currency appreciates and then commodity price risk credit risk four parts default bankruptcy downgrade and settlement are you fine liquidity funding and trading what would be difference correct funding means that you have some liability to be paid off but you are not able to do it because you do not have sufficient liquidity and what would be trading we are not able to buy or sell spot on yes correct operational legal and regulatory business strategic and reputational risk are we good to go ahead so we'll run through a quick definition and sub parts of them market risk it will consider how changes in market price and rates will result in investment losses there are four sub types interest rate market interest rise value of bond will decrease interest rate risk may also arise from having completely unhedged position or only partially hedged position due to underlying transaction that did not fully offset which we call as the basis risk should we move on you can ask me questions if you don't understand anything basis risk means uh, when you want to hedge if this is your asset and if this is your hedge instrument ideally you would want they should behave in exactly same value and same proportion but when that is not happening then we call that as basis risk okay you would understand better when we uh, do it in the context of future uh, contracts but just the easiest way to think is uh, on your underlying asset you made a loss of 100 ideally on your hedged position you should want to make a profit of 100 if this comes out to be 70 then you are exposed to basis risk fine equity price could be of volatility which could be broken down into systematic and unsystematic systematic is stock specific sorry systematic is market specific and that risk that you cannot diversify which we we would do next in the next class unsystematic is stock specific you know so let us think of uh, tata motors or right, let's keep it easy let's think of apple now what if in us the overall economy is not doing good or what if us fed comes and increases interest rate too much then the apple stock will fall but that risk is something that you cannot diversify that is applicable to all the stocks listed in us so that risk we will call as systematic risk but what if apple launches a new product and that fails miserably in the market then that is a stock specific risk we would call that as unsystematic risk is it fine then forex commodity price volatility of commodity due to concentration of specific commodities in the hands of relatively few market participants are you in agreement so what happened in india with gavar seeds isn't it i think couple of years back uh, the commodity was heavily concentrated in the hands of few people and therefore the prices spiked up continuously for a few months so then this is that category of risk 
Credit risk refers to a loss suffered by a party whereby counterparty fails to meet financial obligation to the party under the contract. Four subtypes here default, bankruptcy. Bankruptcy means your liquidation value is less than the amount of loan. Downgrade means your credit rating is taken downwards. And settlement is on the day of settlement you refuse to pay in a derivative contract. Credit risk exists only to that party which has positive gain in a transaction. So let's say it's a derivative contract. There are two parties. The day on which contract is signed, both the parties will have zero value. But as the underlying asset will change, one party will have negative value, other party will have positive value. So then the credit risk exposure right now only is to asset B or the party B because if party A defaults, party B will lose. So this is a sentence. Credit risk exists only to that party which has positive gain in a transaction. Fine. If the losing party defaults, winning party may lose some or all of that net gain. Let's say you buy a bond. The face value of the bond was 1000. Now, what is the probability of default? Let's say probability of default is 40%. This probability of default is also called as the hazard rate because this is that probability that cannot happen more than once. Same organization cannot default twice. Right? Once you default, then you default on those bonds. Now, if probability of default is 40% and loss given default, let us say is 300. That means if there is a default, it doesn't mean you would lose entire amount. You would lose 300 out of 1000. Then we can calculate expected losses which would be 300 into 40 percent which is 120 so expected losses is calculated as probability of default into loss given default concentration risk so you're a bank and you give too many real estate loans in a particular geographical area so it could be geographical concentration it could be type of loan concentration but if your assets are concentrated we call that as concentration risk then maturity risk, if you've given too many loans which are at the maturity of 10 years, then we call that as maturity risk. Is it fine? Liquidity, funding and trading. Funding means you're unable to pay down or refinance your debt. Trading means you're unable to sell your existing set of asset or you're unable to buy those assets. Operational, I think easiest way to think is uh, difficulty in accurately valuing complicated derivative transaction adds to the operational risk. It's a testable sentence. Maybe you should write down in your notes. It looks like a financial risk, but it has been classified as a operating risk. Okay. Robust system of internal control is required. Legal regulatory is, legal would be a new law, some uh, counterparty suing you for default or uh, some litigation stuff happening. Regulatory would be a new tax coming in on certain set of transactions. Business risk, straightforward. Either your revenues are too low or cost is too high. Strategic risk. You decided to enter into a new strategy compared to your competitors and the strategy did not work. So they'll call that a strategic risk. Reputation risk. First one, perceived trustworthiness. So your creators are not trusting you. They're not selling you goods anymore. Second, perception that entity engages in fair dealing and conducts business in an ethical manner. Right? And they've discussed uh, a lot on social networking sites here. Yeah, these days that risk has increased dramatically 